we don't experience it because we're in this state of injury and in pain and in woundedness. I have a I, I had a conversation with someone, and this is someone that lives far, far away, so no one would know who it is, but it was a conversation about this family. It's a very, very good family. They had raised their kids and and they took this young boy uh, as a foster child. And off and on and over the years. And then finally at the age of eleven, uh, this little boy, the parents were, were deemed to be I don't know, so dysfunctional, so abusive to this child that it took him away from him. And this family adopted this, this young boy at the age of 11. And things were going well, but now he's 14. And all this anger is coming out of him. Something they didn't really experience before. Anger and rage, disrespect, even violence. Violence towards the mother. So they don't know what to do. And, and we're thinking, well, shouldn't this young man just be so thankful that these parents took him out of this horrible home and gave him this nice place to live. But I, I kind of use this analogy. If, if, you, if you take a young child, take a kid, you spin around a circle for 11 years, and then ask them to walk a straight line, well, they can't do it. Because the, the people that were supposed to love them, you know, didn't love them. People that were supposed to take care of them didn't take care of them. And it's very confusing to, to a, a child. And so he's disoriented, and, and I'm not saying that his behavior is, is excusable, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just, he has so much woundedness in his heart that it's coming out in, in a very, very bad way. And I'm hoping that these people that love him so much can, can help him through this, and help him to, to, to deal with what's going on inside. But it's disorienting because as, as a child you grow up, and if you're abused, you think this is normal somehow, or you think it's my fault, or you think that this is the way I should be treated. So it becomes very, very difficult. But I really wonder if we ever grow out of that. When somebody strikes out at us, when somebody hurts us, when somebody wounds us, when someone mistreats us, it's very confusing. Do you agree with that? It's disorienting. Like you wonder, well, why did this? And do I deserve this? Is it my fault? Is it their fault? Is it my parents' fault? Is it society's fault? Well, those questions don't really go very far. But we ask ourselves, what do I have to do to get well? What do I have to do to get over this woundedness? Here's a, here's a video of a, of, a, of a doctor. She's an expert in, in, in healing. And so we'll see what she has to say. One of my favorite actresses, by the way. Doctor. <laughs> so, you call yourself a doctor, do you? Well, I do hold several degrees. All right, doctor. <laughs> How do you cure warts? <laughs> yeah, warts. Well, dermatology isn't my field, but I assume electrodesiccation is still a preferred method. And, and sin really has no 
logic to it. That's why it's so evil. Sin is this, this act or this entity that when I sin against somebody, I release kind of this destruction upon them. But I also destroy myself. So there is no sense, no logic. There's nothing that we can reason about sin. It's, it's, it's moral insanity. And we can't figure it out. So we can sit around. Now, we need to learn from our mistakes. There's no doubt. But we can sit around and think, well, am I the way I am because is it 30% my parents' fault and 30% my fault and 30% society's fault and 10% I don't know, someone else's fault. I think that adds up to 100, I'm not really sure. But it doesn't make any, it doesn't help. Because we're trying to make logic out of something that has no logic to it. Sin is insanity. It's destructive to those who commit it, to those who are sinned upon. So we have to kind of wipe that away. But we have to look to God and to realize, no matter how it happened, or whose fault it is, or what's going on, that God is the one who wants to heal us. We see that in Isaiah. Isaiah 61, 1. This is the prophecy of Jesus. It says, and he, he recites this in, in the book of Luke, as he's sitting in the, 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 the synagogue in Capernaum. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them who are bound. Now it doesn't say, well, I will heal your broken heart if it wasn't your fault your heart is broken. Because if it was your fault, then I can't heal it. Or if you're in prison, I'll let you free, but you've got to be innocent. It doesn't say that at all. The love of God and, and His heart is to bring healing to everyone. Because we've all been affected, infected, and touched by, by sin, by evil. So God has come to bring healing for our brokenness, to bring healing for our woundedness. So what do I do? How's, what's my response? Well, I love others. See, love is just the opposite of sin. Sin brings destruction to the one who sins and the one who's been sinned upon. But love brings healing the person that is loving and the person who is being loved. If I want to overcome my woundedness, I can't sit and just dwell upon it and think about all the things that people have done to me and all that. I mean, there's, there's a place for certainly inner healing and for going back to thinking about the things that have happened. But I can't stay there. I have to go forward. I have to realize that this world that I live in is infected by this sin. And I can't make sense out of it because it does not make sense. It's trying to make logic out of something that's illogical. It has no reason. But I can depend upon God. That God wants to bring healing to my life. He wants to bring wholeness. He wants to bring goodness. And my response and the love that He's given to me is to love others. When I give God my hurts, God gives me. Thirdly, when we give God our grief, He gives us His joy. Grief is a part of life. This time of the year can be uh, incredibly joyful. This is a good time of the year for me. But for some people, those who have lost someone they love or relationships are broken, it can be a very difficult time of the year. It can be a time of grieving. The German psychoanalyst Eric Fromm said, to spare someone from grief is at all, at all costs can be achieved only at the price of total detachment, which excludes the ability to experience happiness. Another quote, the risk of love is loss and the price of loss is grief. But we have this wonderful promise in the Bible. We have this promise that God will turn our mourning and turn our grief to joy. Psalm 30, 11 says this, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Psalm 35 says this, Crying may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And in John 
Jesus speaks to his disciples. He says, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. So how do I experience joy in the midst of grief? By experiencing Jesus. Jesus has come to turn our grief into joy. So what do I do? I invite Jesus in. Invite him into my life. Invite him into my difficulty. Invite him into my grief. And in the presence of Jesus, not only is there peace, not only is there joy, not, there, not only is there healing, but there's also joy. Luke 2.10 says this, But the angel said to them, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This whole salvation plan that God orchestrated was that we might experience Him. That we might know Him. That we might experience His presence in our life. And I don't know if there's a greater time, a greater need than when I feel lost and when I feel grief. That Jesus wants to be with us. And as He is with us, He will bring His joy to us. The greatest gift exchange we have, we give God our, our worries, and God gives us His peace. We give God our hurts, and God gives us healing. We give God our grief, and God has given us Himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. We praise you, we give you glory. That everything good that we have is because you are good. And there's so many more good things that you want us to have, Lord, I believe. But somehow life gets in the way and our fears get in the way, our anxieties get in the way, our worries get in the way. And it saps us, it takes away all the things that you want for us. God, I just pray your Holy Spirit would come upon us right now, Lord. Just let your Holy Spirit come upon each of us. Just minister to our hearts, Lord. Take away our worries. Bring healing to our hurts, God. And I pray that your presence, God, would come and be in the midst of those who are, are, are hurting and grieving this Christmas season. And just bring joy to them, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.